How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. And uh, another Russian Imperial Stout. Seems like I've been on a Russian Imperial Stout kick as of late for the past several weeks. And uh, apparently that's not going to change anytime soon because today we're going to be doing Oscar Blues 1050, which is their Russian Imperial Stout. Um, this is the second um, Oscar Blues beer I'm going to be reviewing. Uh, the first one was one of my uh, go-to favorites, uh, not to say cheap beers, but one I typically have in my house, which is their uh, Old Chub, which is Wee Heavy, and I'm a big fan of that, so I'm super excited to give this a whirl, which I've never actually had. Um, I don't know what it is, something about a Russian Imperial Stout coming out of a can, which is asinine to think of, but um, I've not avoided it, but I've never sought it out, but the other day I was in a local to-go place, and they had a four-pack of it, and I figured... Got to review something, so it might as well be a Russian Imperial Stout from a brewery that I'm a little bit of a fan of. Uh, so first things first, as far as what's on the can. Yes, can. Uh, Cross-eyed Silopean, can, I can't even say that last word, uh, 1050 Imperial Stout, brewed and canned by Oscar Blues Brewery, um, Brevard, North Carolina. I believe that is a new brewery from them. I think they opened up a new one in North Carolina. I could be wrong. Anyway, um, let's see. On the side here, infinitely recyclable, different warning stuff, Oxford Blues Brewery, um, North Carolina. On the back, it says here, this dog will hunt. Um, pack it in, pack it out. Up top, half-baked, fully roasted ale, and that's about it. Uh, I like cans uh, for a couple reasons. One, no light. That's always a bonus. Two, uh, it's, you can put way more on a label. Um, so it's kind of cool. Um, so you see, it's a decent label. Um, doesn't blow me away. I kind of like the ghettoness of it, the fact that this is black and gray, um, or black with the tin backing on it. But uh, it's nice. Doesn't blow me away. Doesn't whatever. Um, and as far as dating on this, this beer is just over a month old, so it's quite fresh. So hopefully, this is one of the good ones. Um, I'm kind of particular about my Russian Imperials. I don't like overly hopped Russian Imperial stouts. Um, so we'll see. Uh, let's see. Can I get that whole sucker in there? We'll leave a little bit in the can. Um, so we'll see what this one has to offer. Headwise, gigantic. You can smell the maltiness from here. Roasted malts, like super prevalent. Very sweet. Um, uh, super crazy, crazy, uber creamy head on top. It, it's like this bubbling cauldron of uh, deliciousness. It looks like with um. Pretty uniform bubbles throughout that seem like they don't want to stick around too much. It's not receding all that quickly, but um, yeah, color wise, brown as brown could be. Couldn't tell you about what's going on inside that sucker because of the density, but some darker beers, Russian Imperials, whatever, tend to be like a super uber deep, deep ruby red. This is as brown as brown could be. So, yeah. I like Russian Imperials, but they're so kind of like hit or miss for me. Not hit or miss, but there's two distinct styles to them. Well, there's more than two styles to Russian Imperials, but there's seems like there's your hoppy ones and then there's your non hop forward ones. Uh, same thing with like um, uh, same issue with um, Doppelbox, not with hops, but in uh, density. There's like your high gravity Doppelbox and your thinner Doppelbox. I would love for there to be a, another split and delineation between the two styles to be like this is this kind of Russian Imperial style and this is this kind of Russian Imperial style. I mean if you do research and you look it up and you can kind of get a gist of what's going to be in there I go out of my way to avoid any beer I've never had um, research wise for the, for the most part until I've actually had it. Once I have it I research I look it up and see what other people have to say about it but up until I have it I kind of avoid the crap of it. Unless it's certain things like IPAs and uh, if I get a double IPA and it's not date coded, I'll look up like a date code, try to find a date code on stuff like that just for review purposes. But overall, I avoid them like the plague. So, let's see. There's some roasted malts in that sucker. Um, roasted malts, a little bit of coffee. It smells like dark chocolate almost. Ton of roasted malts, a little bit of hoppiness there, so I don't expect to be that be there in the mouth. He said a little bit of coffee. Not 
that's the pajama driving forces in there. A little bit of brown sugar, maybe even. I want maple syrupy. That would be a good thing. But it smells quite delicious. Whatever that tiniest can detect a tiny little bit of hoppiness in there. So it leads me to believe it's going to be one of those little hop forward Russian Imperials. Yeah, well, it smells quite nice. Definitely, um, you know, I would, uh, yeah, I'd probably go Oscar Blues wins the title as of right now of best beer that comes out of a can. Um, I mean, a lot of people would put just, you know, Hetty out there just because they, everybody loves that just singular thing um, from them. Or more. I mean, we don't get it distributed. Nobody really does. But um, uh, as far as availability, um, these guys, probably a close second would be 21st Amendment, but I'm a fan of Oscar Blues as far as their canning. So, yeah. Some roastiness, deliciousness, coffeeness, maltiness. Let's dive right in there. Cheers. It's got that tiny, the littlest bit of hop to it. A little bit of hop forward. But, I mean, like I said, this can is just north of a month old. I mean, if this sat on the shelf for a couple more months, it wouldn't be there whatsoever. So this is exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to a Russian Imperial Stout. Really uber nice, um roasted malt really nice mouthfeel it's not super dense like I know a lot of people in their stouts want that super creamy almost syrupy thickness to it um, I like not mine to be thin but I have this nice density to it but have this almost criminal drinkability to it which this does nice and creamy not overly dense Roasted malt coffee, almost like you know, I guess that a caramelly toffiness to it. And the slightest, slightest bit of toffiness to it, but it's almost there just to let you know it's there. It's supposed to be a driving force. It's a really nice beer, but it is the, by far the best Russian Imperial I've ever, ever had in a can because it's the only Russian Imperial I've ever had in a can. Um, as far as uh, rating wise, I mean I'm, I'm going to give it a ninety. This is a good beer. This is a really nice beer. I'm surprised. I expected it to be. It's a lot of like American born Russian Imperials tend to have that little bit of hop forwardness. So for it to be more malt based as opposed to having a little bit of hoppiness to it, I'm a big fan. Um, so yeah, 90 overall. Availability. It's not the easiest beer to get because ever since I've been on my. Um, Russian Imperial kick for pretty much the past two months. I was like, okay, I know it's out there. I've had friends that had it before. I'm like, I'll pick one up when I see it. And I haven't seen it up until this week. So, but I know when it comes out, it's available. So I give it availability of a six. As far as value, I mean, I think I paid $16 for a four pack. And for me, that's a pretty damn good price for a beer of this quality. So I'm going to give it like a seven on the value scale. See so yeah, it? The idea overall. And, you know, middle of the road for availability, upper middle road for uh, value. Yeah, it's a really nice beer. Really nice beer. A little bit better than what I expected. Let's put it that way. Mm. Really nice. That's a nice beer. Uh, if you're into Russian Imperials in general, um, check it out. If you're more into your um, non-hot driven Russian Imperials, like your Uncle Jacob Stout, even though it's barrel age, um, Courage, um, beers like that, uh, definitely want to give this a whirl. And the good beers in general. I mean, at the price point that you get with this beer, you can't go wrong. So uh, if you're into good beer, you want to check something out, Oscar Blues 1050. Russian Imperial Stout, definitely worth a try, especially if you're into darker beers. You want something with a nice roasted malt character. And it's really nice and drinkable. And as far as ABV, like I'm sure I said it on there, it's 10.5% alcohol. 
Zero booze. I didn't even talk about that. Zero booze whatsoever. Get it. Great beer. Anyway, another review in the books. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the review. I did. Uh, if you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you'd like to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Massive Beers. We're way more active on Instagram, so if you're going to check us out anywhere, check us out there. But check us out on YouTube first, obviously. And, uh, yeah. The review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a great beer right now. And hopefully you see you next time. Cheers.